<coughs> Jai Sri Krishna. And uh, today we are be going. We will be doing the Yoga Vashisht. And uh, the Yoga Vashisht, the commentary is by Swami Venkateshanan. And today there is going to be a story which is going to tell us again about the lure of Maya. This is what the Yoga Vashisht and Ashtavakra keep saying. But here there are so many interesting stories that keep coming up. So, uh, Yoga Vashishta Ji tells Rama, Oh Rama, listen to another interesting legend to illustrate. To illustrate this, the, the Maya, the power of Maya. There was a country known as Uttara Pandava and uh, there was a king known as Lavana who was a descendant of the famous king Harish Chandra and he was a righteous and good king. And one day as he ascended into the throne, there entered, a, there entered a juggler and he waved a bunch of peacock feathers and a, an exquisitely beautiful horse came in front of him and he requested the king to accept it as a gift. And the, the juggler requested the king to ride that horse and roam freely throughout the world. Thereupon the king closed his eyes and sat motionless. Seeing this, everyone in the court became silent. Now, after some time, the king opened his eyes and began to tremble, as if in fear. As he was about to fall down, the ministers supported him. Dismayed to see them, the king asked, Who are you and what are you doing to me? He was asking the juggler. The worried ministers said to him, Lord, you are a mighty king of great wisdom. And yet this delusion has overpowered you. What has happened to your mind? Only they who are attached to the little objects of the world and the false relationships are subject to mental aberrations. But not one like you devoted to the Supreme. Moreover, only he who has not cultivated wisdom is adversely affected by spells, drugs, etc. Not one whose mind is fully developed. Obviously, I think what the Yoga Vashisht is trying to tell us that even the wise, the Maya is so strong that even the wise can be deluded. So, He's then the king is telling them what had happened. Uh, he said that uh, as soon as I saw this juggler wave his bundle of peacock feathers, I jumped on the horse and stood that stood in front of me and experienced a slight mental delusion. Then I went away on a hunting expedition. The horse led me into a desert. I rested under a tree. The horse ran away. I rested for some time and the sun set. Frightened, I hid myself in a bush. The night was longer than an epoch. The day dawned. The sun rose. I saw a beautiful dark girl in black clothes carrying a plate full of food. I approached her and begged for food. I was hungry. She ignored me. I pursued her. At last she said, I will give you food if you consent to marry me. I consented. Survival was the first and foremost consideration then. She gave me food and later introduced me to her father, who was even more dreadful to look at. Soon the three of us reached their village, which was flowing with blood and flesh. They entertained me with dreadful stories, which were a source of pain, and then I got married to that girl. Very soon I had become a member of the primitive tribe. My wife gave birth to a daughter and then later to three more babies. I had become a family man. In that tribe, I spent many years among this tribe, suffering the agonies of family man with a wife and children to feed, to protect. I cut firewood and often I had to sleep under a tree at night. And time rolled on and I became old. I began to trade, trade in meat. I took the meat to the villages on the mountains and sold the best part of it. And Clad only in a loincloth, I endured every inclemency of the weather. Thus, I spent seven years bound by the ropes of evil tendencies. Then a drought came in the land. The air was so hot and it seemed to waft sparks of flame. The forest caught a light. 
Some had even begun to eat corpses. Some, while doing so, even chewed their own fingers, which had been soaked in the blood of those dead bodies. What was once a flourishing forest had been transformed into a huge crematorium. Thus afflicted by famine, I left the country and migrated elsewhere. Some others, deeply attached to their wife and children, perished in that land. Many others were killed by, any, by animals. I too left the country to go away along with my wife and children. At the border of the country, I found the cool shade of a tree. And after putting my th down the little children I was carrying on my shoulders, I rested. But the youngest of my children was quite small and innocent. And he demanded food. Although I told him there was nothing to eat in his childish innocence, he persisted. In his de demand, unable to bear his hunger, I said to him in despair, All right, eat my flesh. The innocent child said nothing without thinking. He said, some, he said without thinking, give me. I was moved by attachment and pity. I saw that the child was unable to endure the pangs of hunger. I decided that the best way was to end all those miseries was to end my life. I raised a pyre with the help of the timber I found nearby and ascended the pyre. I shuddered and I found myself in this court being hailed and greeted by all of you. So just imagine all that was delusion and maya. But let me read the last part. As the king said this, the juggler vanished. The minister said, Lord, he cannot be a juggler, for he was not interested in money as a reward. Surely some divine entity wished to demonstrate to you and to all of us the power of cosmic illusion. From all this, it is clear that this world appearance is nothing but the play of the mind. The mind itself is but the play of the omnipotent infinite being. The mind is able to fool even men of great wisdom. Else, where is the king who is well versed in all branches of learning? And where is this bewildering delusion? Surely this is not a juggler's trick. For a juggler performs for material gain. It is really the power of illusion. Hence the juggler vanished without looking for a reward. Vashishta said, Rama, I was there in that court at that time, and so I know all this firsthand. In the manner, in this manner, the mind veils the real nature of the self and creates an illusory appearance with many branches, flowers, and fruits. Destroy this illusion by wisdom and rest in peace. So here we have been illustrated by this legend and story that how powerful Maya is. So ponder upon it and until next time, take care and God bless.